Our next subject pertaining to weather is ice. There's basically three types of ice. We have clear ice, rime ice, and mixed ice. Uh, clear ice is when you fly through water droplets and the water droplets freeze to your wing or to your windscreen or any other surface exposed to the oncoming moisture. Um, clear ice is the most dangerous ice because it can form very, very rapidly. When you fly through the moisture, if the temperature is even 2 degrees Celsius, so positive 2 degrees Celsius, and you may think, well, it's rain, so it wouldn't freeze to your aircraft. But the problem is, is that your aircraft moving through the air is much colder than the actual outside air temperature. So it's possible that your wing temperature could be minus 1 degree Celsius, which is a perfect temperature for this moisture to reach your aircraft and then freeze. Even in an aircraft that has uh, protective surfaces, whether it's um, uh, boots where the uh, air is inflated on the leading edge of your wing, or you have a heated wing where the leading edge is uh, heated to prevent the ice from forming to begin with, or you could also have what they call a weeping wing. A weeping wing is where there are little tiny holes in the leading edge of the wing that continues to emit uh, an antifreeze type solution. But if you're in clear icing, and especially if it's severe clear icing, the water can uh, get behind your protected surface and freeze above your wing, disrupting your airflow across the wing, which would reduce your lift or prevent the aircraft from producing lift at all. So clear ice is very dangerous because it can uh, form very, very rapidly, it's very heavy, and it definitely can disrupt your airflow. The next type of ice is uh, rime ice, and rime ice looks more like that uh, frosty type ice that you might find in your freezer. And in order to get rime ice, you would have to fly through a cloud where the precipitation is already frozen, and those frozen particles will adhere to the leading edge of your wing. Sometimes it'll make more of a horn shape on the front of your, uh, the leading edge of your wing. And this will disrupt your airflow going over your wing, but possibly not as bad as a clear ice problem might be. So clear ice, you could either fly through a cloud that has moisture in it, or you could just fly through the rain falling from beneath the cloud and uh, get clear ice. And remember that you don't have to be in freezing temperatures for this to occur, because your wing surface is colder than the surrounding temperature. The rime ice is when you fly through a cloud that has frozen particles and those frozen particles adhere to the leading edge of your aircraft. Um, and then finally mixed ice is kind of self-explanatory because uh, mixed ice would just be a combination of the two. Now one thing I want to point out is um, first of all if you're VFR you shouldn't be flying into clouds anyways. You're not supposed to be flying in instrument meteorological conditions. But it is possible that you fly through some rain and um, the rain freeze on your aircraft. Now the problem um, with this is it not only does it disrupt your airflow but it, over the wing, but it also can uh, block your air intakes that, and the air is how your engine is working. So you could block your air intakes for the engine, you could block your air intakes that are part of your environmental system. Um, also, if your windshield iced over, it would be very difficult to land the airplane. You'd have to slip the airplane to see sideways out of your window because you couldn't see out of the front. Um, also, if your antennas ice over, then they would um, tend to vibrate with the wind and possibly snap off. So you don't want to be flying and lose your communication and your navigation uh, due to even a small amount of icing. Um, the other thing is that your control surfaces, you know, your ailerons, your elevator, and your rudder, if they become iced over, uh, there may be a few surprises for you because the ailerons may work or not work, or the elevator may work or not work. Um, also, I want to point out that smaller surfaces on your aircraft freeze first. So if we look at the tail, the tail of the aircraft is an upside down wing shape. And it's also a lot smaller than the wing itself. So if you were getting ice on your wing, you most likely have three to four times the amount already adhering to your tail. Now keep in mind that your uh, tail, the purpose of the tail, is to keep the nose of the aircraft up in the air. So let's try to make this the rest of our airplane on here. Um, the engine being the heaviest part, 
has to be held up by the downforce your tail produces. And if your tail becomes iced over, then you no longer have that downforce of the tail and your nose would fall straight down. So if you're suspicious that you have ice on the aircraft, it's best not to change your configuration. And what I mean by that is do not add flaps. If you added flaps, what happens is at the point that you add flaps and it increases your angle of attack, producing more lift, you would have to pitch the nose back down a little bit and retrim it. Well, you're changing, when you pitch the airplane down, you're changing the angle of attack on the tail surface. If your tail, were, if you're flying straight and level, for example, you have the relative wind in relation to your cord line, but if you pitch the airplane down, then the tail would go in this direction. But the wind is still coming from here. So, in reality, you've just changed your angle of attack on the tail by pitching down, and you've increased that angle of attack on the tail. And it's possible that you've increased it right to the point to you have exceeded your critical angle of attack. And because the tail provides that down force, if you no longer have that down force to hold the engine up in the air, then the nose is going to fall. So if you're suspicious that you have icing, you should definitely not change your configuration. Do not add flaps. Also, if you're suspicious that you have ice, you see it's starting to form on your aircraft as you're flying through maybe some light drizzly rain, you should definitely either turn around or descend where you know there might be warmer temperatures.